Hello and welcome to Speed Stars. Now, over the last few weeks, we've put some of South Africa's best-known faces behind the wheel in a bit to find out who's the fastest around Swartkops. And it's been quite a ride. We've had Olympians, comedians, musicians, chefs, you name it. All of them have been stepping out of their comfort zones and into the cockpits of a performance car. We've also given you, the viewer at home, some tips on how to be a safer driver. And this week, we're going to be sharing some more advice on how to deal with difficult situations on uh, our roads. At the end of the season, our three speediest stars are going to go head to head around Spark Course once again. The winner gets to receive from Michelin a 30,000 Rand check to donate to a charity of their choice, as well as going on an all expenses VIP trip to the Lamar 24 hour race and a watch from Fortis valued at 28,000 Rand. So, without further ado, let's get to meet this week's two formidable competitors. Okay, go. Good on you, mate. Okay, and break, 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 break. Put your hands on. <laughs> and a three. There we go. Good. Hands. <laughs> Get nice and close to that cone. Your hands. Watch your left hand. Watch your right hand. Watch your hands. Welcome, you two. Final two contestants. It's, uh, it's been quite a show. Different backgrounds, both rugby field based. Spent a lot of time with him, John. Yeah. Is he a good ref? When we were winning, he was a very good ref. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Do you think he's a good driver? I enjoyed uh, Jonathan. He's a, you know, he's a, like a bit of an attitude on the field as well. You know? mm. So, and I, he, and I always knew that if the other guy got it wrong, the captain, he'd bite his head off before he bit mine. So I always used to just gauge him enough so that the other guy would irritate him more than me, and that used to work. But uh, no, he was good. Though. He was fair. Didn't let anyone push him around. I tried my best, but never really got it right. The worst guy to ref. Funnily enough, I found um, O'Driscoll, I, I refed Ireland more times than anyone else, and I found him to be quite squeaky um, coming in from a distance. It was like quite, I knew it was coming. <laughs> but he'd, he'd have his say in any case, and he was probably given license to do it, so mm. it was just his way. But when a situation calls for calm, mm. and you've got a lot of uh, higher emotions, and the captains are not actually helping to, uh, you know, to box with you, then it can be, get more difficult. So, you know, that's the type of guy that I battle with. I actually really enjoy reading a lot of what you do online. Every South African reckons he knows everything. He's the ultimate referee, coach. He, he does it all. But you do give some really good advice, especially now during the past World Cup. Big need for that, I suppose. I, th I think so. I've said for a long time what's missing is that there needs to, because rugby is a complex game, so there has to be a conduit between the refereeing department and the law side of things and the players, coaches, and then the spectators. And there's, there's got to be someone helping the situation, even if it's post-event, because that's really what people want, is that yeah. little post-event thing to, to say, you know what, I was actually right. The ref made a mistake. Mm. He's not a bad guy. He just he made an error. Or, no, the ref was 100% right, and, and I've learned something. John, I guess, so, yeah. You know why they're good, though? And I guess it's because, at the moment, JK is independent. So he mm. can actually say it how it is. <laughs> We've had a season where I've mm. had to do a lot of blaming. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, when I felt frustrated and I felt it's gone away, you, know, you don't often get all the answers all the time because there's a, there, there needs to be, a, I guess, a decorum of protecting yep. all sorts of brands. And I guess sometimes you read Jono's comments afterwards and it gives you a little bit of a reprieve that you weren't Proper insight. just a sort of biased administrator thinking that your team was outdone. You know? But something that isn't complicated and is really simple is, is road safety, actually. And you guys have been through, through the mill. But for our viewers, in this week's safety feature, we're going to take a closer look at that link between speed and stopping distances. There's your 50. Then second gear. Turning our stars into speed stars with two of the best. Multiple production car and touring car champion, both locally and abroad, Mike Briggs dominated racing in the sports glory days here in South Africa. Chop Sapuka changed the face of motorsport in our country and at the same time rewrote the record books in the fiercely competitive world of production car racing. Our stars were transferred from the luxury of the Fairway Hotel to our test facility at Swankup's Raceway. Driving is all about spatial awareness and anticipation, and that's the crux of today's lesson. Go as fast as you can, 
and you've got to anticipate. You've got to break inside this box. Now you've got a lot of room here. If you overshoot it, those are going to be your colleagues that you've just killed and we're going to disqualify you. If you stop short, you're going to obviously let, the, let your foot off the brake and, 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 and lose time. So the idea is to get from there to here in the shortest possible time without killing anybody and, and using the skill that you learned this morning. It's all up to you to anticipate braking. I'm just recording time. Okay. So you can pull off as fast as you want or as slow as you want. Hmm. <sighs> Don't be nervous. <laughs> Look to the cone. Don't be scared. <laughs> Only time your hands come off is to change gear. Okay, cool. Okay. Three. And don't be scared to plant the brakes. Hold on the brakes, hold on the brakes. I thought you weren't telling Jack when to brake, Wes. <laughs> Boom! Stay calm. Good shift. As lovely as it is to have the wind blowing through your hair, seeing where you're going is way more important. <laughs> So, like I said, the I brakes so are soon. very good. <laughs> so we gave Bridget another chance, this time with her hair tied up. Very good. I was told it was Much better. better. <laughs> no one told me I have to know how to drive. That's what I'm here for. I guess you have to start somewhere, Sif. So, let's try not to kill any cones. Did you stall? So have you stalled the car? Because that's 10 second penalty. No, no, never, never, never. No, just, just uh, start it again for me. You might have. <laughs> no, it was, it's called stopping. You can stop anywhere you can. Come on, man. Chef Ruben feeling the heat already. Let's hope he doesn't um, overcook it. Everyone I forgets. Didn't didn't you, nothing wrong with that? Well done. Oh, but you're on the brakes very early there, yeah. and you came off, which is yeah. fine. Right, you should have been killing me. Good start. Nice and aggressive. Oh, please don't encourage her, Ian. She did install. Very well done. Very well done. And you did install. Now you can ask all the guys who installed. Well done. Oh, nasty done, Melinda. Good change. Seems Larry was also caught out by the good brakes. Oh, man. <laughs> good speed. That's John assuming the brace position. Wow. Very, very, very well done. <laughs> Good speed and anticipation meant he never needed to come off the brakes. You know, the scary part is that here you know where you must stop. Right? You're told that's where you must stop, but you still can't really figure out where you must really start getting onto the brakes and how much more on the national road. Oh, exactly. scary, it's disaster. You can't see that short distance. 100%. It's shortened so, by so much. 100%. Driving requires 100% of your attention 100% of the time. So keep a safe following distance and that's going to give you extra time to react in an emergency. Now we know the two of you are competitive, uh, wanting to go as fast as you can, but we had to teach you how to drive safely as well. Anything that was a standout for you, Jonathan? Knowing what you can do with a car was quite important for me because I, I never realised uh, you know, that you could turn and brake as hard as I, as I could eventually. In addition to that, I was pretty decent at going through the, uh, you know, going through the obstacle course. But as soon as I got onto the phone, I think I was probably one of the worst. Uh, dropped right down the list, probably even come last, because my concentration between that and the road, uh, you know, that skill, I, I didn't, didn't so, do well. It's not a bad challenge to lose, though, to say you're worse at texting and driving, but it's something that we, we all do, we're all guilty of it. Uh, for, for you, John? From the, the, the sort of ability of the car and the ABS and the braking side of things, I was, I was pretty familiar. I've done a few courses in terms of safety and advanced, and, and so you can sort of you get to know what a car can do when you put it into that situation, water, braking, distance, and that kind of thing. But I think I'm with John. The, the, the texting story was, was, a, was, a, was a proper wake-up call. I mean, to be fair, that, the drill we did was not quite what you're going to be doing on the school run in the mornings. But, exactly. Um, 
I've been unbelievably good since then by actually just leaving my phone alone. You know? and, and your wife phoned you. Yeah. So he's trying to text and answer the phone call and drive. I know. I, know. I wasn't happy yeah. about that. No, but, no. Uh, so I, I've, I've left the text thing and I just I put it onto my Bluetooth. And if there's something that needs to be done, I'll just go over the car. But it's, uh, it's probably the thing that is the most distracting, especially when you're going slowly and you think that it's okay to catch up on a few SMSs. Yeah? Mm. Um, and, and I've become quite judgmental as well because yeah. I'm, I'm even tuning the traffic cops yeah. now because they sit in the traffic and I think the they, they're texting and I, I look at them and I go. It's such a bad thing and we all do it. So we're already bad with that. Thanks for that message. Hopefully you keep uh, influencing your mates because that's what the idea with Speed Stars was. Stay tuned. After the commercials, our two stars have achieved so much on the rugby field. Let's see if they can reach the same heights on the racetrack. There's also a chance for you to win big time in our viewer competition, but more about that after the break. You're watching Speed Stars. Hello and welcome back to this week's show. It's time now to hand Jonathan and John over to our two race aces for some detailed information, tips critical on how to tackle SWAT Corps really quickly. Elbows point down, turn 180 degrees. So you're not steering with your body, you're steering with your arms. Your body feels what the car does, your arms feel what the steering wheel, what the wheels are doing. Stay on the gas. Brakes. Nice and hard on the brakes. A little bit more, 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 more. Turning too early. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Okay. A little bit too much. Give me some more brakes in the beginning. Uh, more brakes. Yeah. Don't be scared to brake. Grab the wheel for me. Stop me from moving the steering wheel. You ready? Stop you, yeah. Put turns on the wheel. You have far more control. Right hand there, keep your body nice and still. The brakes turn it in. Look where your hands are. <laughs> brakes, 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 brakes. Okay, good. Off the brakes. Watch your hands. See how you're using your body. Go time. Three laps. Who's in? Who's lucky? <laughs> Remember, we're going to go back up to third, but keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Third, brake, brake, brake. Third, turn in and nail it. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem, that's fine. Keep it going, go. Good on you, mate. Okay, and brake, 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 brake. Brake a bit more, brake a bit more, turn in, curb. Aim the curb and nail it flat now. Run it wide, come wide out here. And brake, 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 turn in, touch the curb. And now we're running a bit too wide, you have to come off the gas, that's it, it's fine. A little bit too soon there, that's fine. Go, okay, nail it. Go, go, go. Well done. Go, 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 go. Break. Wait for the curve and don't do that with your hand. Turn in. That's it. And nail it. The big thing to concentrate on, watch the hands. I don't like you to move the hands and that putting the hands over because you want to keep the hands in that 10 to 2 position. That's all that I can fault with your with your lap there. A little bit late on the brakes, a bit aggressive, but you got it. <laughs> <laughs> First time on a racetrack for you, Jonathan. Yeah. And? I loved it, eh? It, uh, like I said, I learned a little bit about the car and what it can do and, and then where I need to improve because I've got some very bad habits. <laughs> Hands. 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 Well, we've, got, we've gone through that already. John, uh, fearless. I mean, I, I expect nothing less from a, a Springbok hooker. Um, nothing's going to scare you, especially the brakes. <laughs> 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 what was that like with Mike? I mean, you guys had a couple of couple of good moments. Uh, yeah, I, my career took so long to get going fast. So I, <laughs> I tried never to break when I was playing rugby. So <laughs> I took a similar approach. So I flip, I loved it. And Mike yeah. is just so good. Eh? Yeah. When we went off the track, it was I think it was the first hot lap of, of mm. training. And so obviously it just uh, took the apex too late and came out wide. And uh, I just hovering hand and made me just realize that, you know, he, he was, I was just before he was about to kick me. So it's quite a nice bit of adrenaline. Obviously, Rob Forbes is the one to beat, but you want to get into the top three. Before I reveal your hot lap, John, looking at this now, I mean, is there, is there anybody that you have to just put in their place? Stop. I'd like to take Jack, Jack Paradine. Eh? Mm. Yeah. He, yeah, you don't yeah. like his tweets. He's a bit busy, eh? Yeah, he's got, he's got a lot of action going on his Twitter account. I know he'd be gutted to get, 
anything for that. <laughs> but other than that, I don't actually know how the rest of them drive, and you know? so it's quite yeah. difficult to know where you're sitting. Well, let me tell you, everyone that was in John Smith's group picked him as the one on that day to, to beat. So he's fearless. He is fast, as you've seen in the training. But can he put that together in one perfect hot lap? He's quite fast. Yeah, oh, man. Okay, glove. Okay. Go time. Go time. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Don't embarrass me now. I invested a lot of time into you, young man. <laughs> okay, I'm closing this Don't window. Don't break too late. <laughs> It's a very good start. No wheel spin. Important. Tricky on that turbo. Got a lot mm. of torque. Yeah, so it takes late as well. Yeah, yeah. What's it like when you sit there with the, the red lights on? Like Heart a, beating, yeah, adrenaline. Proper. Oh man. But this is what I love. I, I'm, I'm imagining we're not going to hear much from you on board. No, quite in the zone. Just I was trying to remember that all the points. Yeah. Yes, where we turn into. Yeah, myself. Because it is, I mean, I, I've picked up, you're quite analytical. You want to understand how the things work. We know John is, is quick, but it's about getting the, the breaking points right. Here's your favorite corner. You owned a bit of retail there. I got this one. It's the next one that stuffed me. Yeah, this one. Heading up to uh, turn yeah. five. Tricky on the braking point. Car's quick though. It's a big step up when you've done your training in Adams. Doesn't look so bad. It's it looks fine. so much slower on TV. <laughs> <laughs> look, if, if there's one thing that every single guest has said, it's exactly that. It looks so slow, and inside you feel like you're hanging on Honestly, for dear life. I feel like I'm in the Fast and Furious, but <laughs> inside there. This is the last corner, very, very tricky one. <laughs> yeah, I took it too wide as well. Listen, at least you're on the track. Trevor Gumby, he was, yeah, he was trying to end up on the other side of the track. <laughs> Different when you're on your own, eh? Yeah, this is no advice. <laughs> so, so I remembered most of the corners, but all the long corners I remembered, but it's the tight ones mm. that are obviously... Um, Confident? I don't know, I think I went faster in my training lap, so... Oh, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> think about, anyway, it's good fun. I think about it. that for a while. Yeah, exactly. No phone calls from... No, no, I left the phone out of the car this time. If you've learned something today, exactly. you've learned that. Well I'll take done. something away here. <laughs> John, nice to Well done. Thanks, man. Good on. So you said you um, think you went fast in your training laps. Would that have been maybe because of having Mike there? Does that make a big difference, having that person yeah, telling he's you... he's talking to you, he's reminding you about the points. Carry on talking, this is, this is good news. I mean, oh, shame. Boy, okay, so boy, 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 yeah. like a wooden spoon. No, it's shame. Okay. 142. So let's just move. Let's just not muck around. Let's keep get going. all these. Keep, keep going, keep, keep going, going, keep going. A lot of people wanted to beat Siv. Good news, you did as well. Lala, Ross out the way. Leanne, Jenny, Melinda, Larry, Bridget, Kurt, Darren. Let's Ooh, stop here, because so now close. it gets interesting. So you know what you've got to do. You've got to beat Catlejo, you did. You need to beat Ruben to get into that final shootout next week. If I come fourth, I'll be devastated. Let me tell you what you did. You set a lap time of one minute, 24.96. So you've done two things. You've made it at this stage into the final. In actual fact, you secure in the final position. Um, and you beat Jack Parra. <laughs> you beat Jack. Oh, Jack, you'll be getting a text tonight. <laughs> that could be the only time you reply to one of his tweets. Fantastic yeah. time, John. Sure. Didn't beat Forbes. Happy uh, with that. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, eh? Because if I've come there close, uh, it's that, sure. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet, You've still yet, got yeah. the final to, to play. To be fair, he goes, he goes in overconfident, eh? Mm. This is a pool stage. You've made yeah. it into the knockouts. Yeah. How are you feeling now? Because we've got to look at your hot lap. If you're looking at this... I'm, I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes. I know I did. I, I made a lot of errors, but you know, I went as fast as I could on that, on that lap. Let's see. There's only one way to answer his question of, is he fast enough? Let's have a look at his hot lap. To ensure a level playing field, the guys from Force Fuel were on hand to top up the OPC's tank after every hot lap. In addition, we asked Chops to set benchmark times throughout the day to account for changing environmental factors like temperature and wind speed. Face in. Yeah, and then roll it back. Now, there we go. Oh. Just... Yes. I'm all good. Okay. 
can do it now, it's fine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Very simple, there's no uh, green lights. Yeah. Red light on, red light off. Okay. And that's when you go. Okay, close window, give me a thumbs up when you're ready. It looks slow. It's at this point that John's now going, oh, okay, good start. It was a good start. Uh, very, very good start, Jonathan. Look, you, you, you're remembering the hands. It's a good start. No underarm, well done. Am I remembering? So far, Instinct. So it looks but, so slow. It does. Uh, <laughs> but you arrive at, at turn four at about 170 k's an hour, so you, you, you might- I made up for it. Yeah, are you going. What were the top speeds reached? You do about 170 going into, into turn four. That's the quickest point. Which sounds like nothing, but it's the speed you carry through that corner. Also, nothing to say, eh? No. Were the other very, others talking very to focused. It? Listen, Lali Iriyama spoke the whole way through a lap. A few of the others were cursing and swearing, but yeah, the guys that kept quiet have ended up higher on the leaderboard. That's someone I would like to have beaten. Off the, off the field as well. Sounding good though, there's tire squeal. That's what I want to hear. It means you're pushing. Final turn, Jonathan Kaplan. Yeah. One turn to keep it together. Ah. Bit of squeal. Whoa, running wide. On the line before the hot clap, hey, this engine's cutting out. Yeah. You know you must change before the red line, eh? Because yeah. there's a rev limiter. No, but <laughs> I realized that afterwards when I was speaking to you, but I was just thinking, like, if I want to go faster, is it capable of going faster? <laughs> so, yeah. Turn eight, great commitment, being yeah. foot flat and pulling it out. I came in too hard, but then I thought I'm just going to burn it to... If I would have braked, I would have lost time, so I'll just... <laughs> I, I like winning games. That's my, that's my thing, I like winning games. I love the way you think. If I lift off here, I'm not going to set up a good time. A lot of tire squeal. It looked like a good lap. Are you confident? Um, you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You don't I, have I, a field I've of never, reference. I've never, I've got no frame of reference. I've never been on a track before. I've never <laughs> raced against any of these guys, so. Okay, I'm going to put you out oh, of your oh, misery. Oh, oh. So there's a gap for you at the moment. Okay. So that's good. I'm not having to count you down from all the way at the bottom. Okay. The big question is where are you going to end up? Are you going to make it into our top three? So, you've beaten Ruben Riffle. So now all you need to do is beat Jack Parrow and you're into our final shootout next week. Jonathan Kaplan, you set a lap time of one minute, 24.61, which moves you to the very, very top you of see? our Speed Stars leaderboard. <laughs> Huh. You, you seem surprised, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. Did you see what I did on the went off road? Hey. Very good. Yeah. Surprised? Yeah, I'm a bit surprised. I think John's also surprised. Yeah. No, I tell you what, you were the surprise package for me. Because I, I, I never thought you'd be that good. But one thing nobody can do is, is beat you in terms of the leaderboard. And that means you go through to the final. As with the, John. As the current champion. <laughs> and with Rob Forbes. Oh, the, the log leader. The log leader. That's right, yeah, yeah. No and pressure. still play the semis in the finals. Yeah, no pressure now. It's quite, yeah. actually, this is not awkward. We're both going through. I mean, in the same episode, yeah. Eh? It is. It's <laughs> nice. That's why, that's, why we that's why we timed it like this. Well done. So, guys, congratulations. Thank you very much for joining us on Speed Stars. For our viewers at home, it's very simple. All you've got to now do is decide who is going to be the ultimate Speed Star. Is it going to be Jonathan Kaplan? Will it be Rob Forbes? Or will it be John Smith? And we'll see you guys next week. It's going to be epic.